Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and tonight we're going to talk about the pedestal. Treat her like a queen, and she'll treat you like a peasant. Um, now, a lot of times when conversations are held on this topic, they are talking about uh, treating her too good. But in this case, it's going to be an article I'm going to read about when a woman withholds the bedroom fun from you, hoping to make you find her a higher value and a quality catch instead of being the action-packed woman that she maybe really is and i'll kind of lead you uh, down the like down the direction of what got me here to this topic tonight and then i have a really good article um it's written by uh yeah lucio uh buffalo buffalo mano the author holds a master's degree from la uh, from La Spinienza, Department of Communication and Sociological Research, and is a member of the American Psychology Association. He studies psychology, persuasion, social and dating strategies, and anything related to people and power dynamics. So I think that'll be uh, this will be kind of a, a fun one. It's a little bit of a long one, but I tell you, I think it's worth it because a lot of women, um, a lot of women will hold, withhold. I mean, if they're just into going out and having fun with a guy, a lot of times they'll do it. Um, but men, in many cases, women that say, hey, I really like this guy, I'd like it to last, and I don't want him to just hit it and disappear on me, so I'm going to make him wait, because um, that will show him that I'm, I'm serious and that uh, I don't want him to go anywhere. So uh, we're going to start first with some, um, some posts that kind of lead up to something like this. So the first one, this is a girl named Oat Titty Milk, Oat Titty Milk. Uh, I've never dated anyone that was proud to date me. They are always like, no, I don't want to tell anyone. Um, this, again, in of itself is telling you these women are being with higher quality guys that are just using them for easy access to bedroom fun, and they don't even want their friends to know that they're with this girl. I haven't seen her photos. She might be okay. Um, I can just see a little profile picture here. But she's never dated anyone that was proud to date her. And I think that's a problem. And again, it goes towards there are so many men out there that would be happy to have a good woman, that, but the good women or the bad women or too many women are, are, are spending time with the bad boys. Here's another example of it. This next one, this is a dating profile one. It says, I'm classy Christian woman. Please only message me if you share these beliefs. Okay. I'm not a virgin, but I won't have any bedroom fun with you until I'm married. I want to be very transparent about that. If you're interested, message me. Again, she may be Christian. She's gone out and she's had some fun. But now that she wants to lock in a guy, she's going to withhold the bedroom until he marries her to ensure that she can catch her prize. This is fine if you did have the big V in the beginning. If you said, you know what? I've never been with a guy and I want to be married before I share that experience with a man. I'd have no problem with this. But the fact that you're changing the rules after you've gone out and had your fun and now you're going to make the man wait, the man to marry you, again, falsely inflating that she is of high value and a good catch. And then the last one. And this is really the one that got me looking into this because this is just awful. She says, so my boyfriend and I, and this is a, I don't know, Facebook post or whatever it is. Uh, she says, so my boyfriend and I have, have bedroom fun about once a month. It's not like I don't like it, but I don't want our relationship to be centered around the bedroom fun every time we meet. I love him very much, so I need to set standards for him to see value in me. But deep down, I crave the bedroom every day. So again, she's saying, you know what? I like it, but I'm keeping it off the table so that he finds value in me. I want him to see me as a good, valuable woman. However, the next paragraph. Recently, I've been seeing this other guy. I don't love him. I don't see my future with him. So I feel comfortable having bedroom fun with him every day. I don't mind if he sees me as a garden tool. I just, I'm just using him to satisfy my urge. So she's with a guy. She loves him very much. She wants to be with him. She, she loves her relationship with him, but she wants him to see her as high value so she doesn't sleep with him. So what does she do instead? She sleeps with another guy that she doesn't care about what he thinks of her. Cheating on the guy that it, it, when she wants to see high value. You see, this is a low person. This is a low value woman. Obviously, if she's cheating and lying about it and sleeping with another guy every day, 
behind her boyfriend's back, but she's pretending to be high value. And and this is where we talk a lot about, um, hey, actions speak louder in, than words. And a lot of times when you're dating somebody or you're hanging out with somebody, we talk about some red flag questions and things you can look out for. Like, hey, if, if a woman does this, be careful. Uh, you know, you never know. But you still ask those questions. And then over time, before you get emotionally involved, before you fall head over heels in love, before you commit to this person, you see if they live up to their standards of of what they've said. In this case, this poor guy is getting cheated on every day and, and he probably will think like, wow, I've got to catch. She's not easy. She plays hard to get. Hot mess. So here's the main article. And again, a little longer read, but I think this is a good one. And I think there's a lot that you guys can take away from this because I, I know I did. I didn't read the whole thing, so I may find some surprises in here for myself as well. But she says, why, uh, or he says, why you should not make him wait to sleep with you. Should you make him wait to sleep with you? If you listen to all the popular dating advice, you should, yes. The problem with that advice, it's nothing more than platitudes and author's opinions. This article will investigate the topic with data and psychology to prove you with a better answer. And by the end of it, you will know whether or not you should make him wait for the bedroom fun. They go on to say, they give you a kind of a list of here of everything. And then they say what the dating advice says, let him wait for the bedroom. It's the battle cry that's all the dating bestsellers for women chant in unison. It's a long list with the same message, but here's some of those most popular titles. And they uh, give out the uh, couple of book titles. Ignore the guy, get the guy, act like a lady, think like a man. King suggests 60 days minimum. Lambert suggests get a relationship before the bedroom fun, which I actually agree with. Harvey has a 90-day rule. Some other authors go infinite with as long as you can. And in the meanwhile, all I say is you focus on getting as much investment as possible. But why? All right, let me pause here and say this. So I actually agree you should you, you should um, at least make the relationship rules clear before the bedroom fun. If I, if I say, hey, you know what? I'm only, I'm only into hookups. And the girl says, oh, I'm into long-term dating. Then the woman has to say to him, no, thank you. Or the guy could be mature enough to say, you know what, I'm going to end up breaking your heart. We shouldn't do this. If the reverse is true, where the guy says, you know what, I'm looking for a girlfriend. And the girl says, I just want to hook up. Many times the guys will say, okay, I'm cool with that because it's bedroom fun and I'm a man and here we go. I think the problem that's happening today is young women are going into it thinking, hey, um, we're going to start this as casual and we'll have lots of bedroom fun. But eventually I, I, I hope he starts developing feelings for me and he cares about me and we fall in love. And that doesn't happen because the guy, just like the other one that I, I pointed out in this in this uh, uh, Twitter post, she says, I never dated anyone that was proud to date me. They're always like, no, I don't want to tell anybody. A lot of times women will end up with a guy like that. And the guy's like, no, man, we're having fun. I'm, I'm willing to smash, but I'm not going to like lock it down. It's just not going to happen. So I'm fine with with at least get the relationship rules ironed out before anything happens. And then if the woman says it's casual and the guy agrees, and then she later says, you know something, I really like you. I think we should date full time. And the guy's like, no, she can get upset, but she has no basis to be upset because you set the ground rules and your feelings have changed. You can have that You can have that conversation too of saying, hey, my feelings are changing. And the guy can go, mm, sorry, I, I got to go. Okay, so, um, but uh, the other point I wanted to make is that, yes, they're making a guy wait back in the quote old school days of dating that was fine because men would say hey you know what she hasn't shared herself with a lot of men she wants to make sure i'm a good i'm a good guy and i'm going to treat her well and i'm going to be with her i think that's fair and that's doable the problem is today we men know what the dating market is like we we know that a lot of women not all a lot of women are going out there saying you know what we're going to hook up a little bit and uh something long will happen out of this and it doesn't happen and so we know the body counts that people are having on both men and women are going higher and higher. And then both seem to actually have struggles getting into a, a relationship. The men don't want to settle down because they don't need to, especially if they're attractive and doing well. And the women, they don't settle down until it's kind of too late because they're getting to sleep with hot, fun guys. Guys, are you tired of cancel culture? Are you tired of not having a good place to go use social media and talk with like-minded people? And you're tired of Twitter and you're tired of Facebook and all those other places? You can now join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. Locals is not just my community. It is becoming home to thousands of other creators. You can join my community as well as many others. 
And the great thing about it is that is a it's kind of my own server. So there's really no moderation other than your fellow users of the channel. And you can come over there and make posts. Members over there do get uh, get all my my normal content that I have over here. But if you do become a supporter, you also get content such as one one off unique videos. I do about one, maybe two a week over there. I get to talk like an adult and use adult words instead of talking like a three year old child here on YouTube. And so I get to use all the spicy words I like to and talk about con content that I just can't talk about over here on YouTube. Uh, the other thing is, if you uh, look at the cancel culture right now, it doesn't matter who you are, they are coming for you. And I know a lot of you maybe overseas aren't feeling it quite as much, but they're coming against our movies, they're coming against Muppets, they're coming against our children's books, they're coming against actresses like Gina Carano. Uh, they're coming against our Supreme Judges, such as Clarence Thomas, a black man who uh, Amazon removed their documentary uh, from from being shown on Amazon because it brought the wrong message. Again, if you'd like a place where you can hang out with like-minded people, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. It is free, but if you would like to support, you will get access to my podcasts and extra videos every week. Now back to me. Uh, they say the case for making him wait. The idea of letting him wait for the bedroom is not totally wrong. It's based on the theory that men want quick bedroom fun and women want relationships. And albeit, it's a, a generalization. There's also quite some truth here. I would agree, but I still disagree because a lot of women now are going out there and they're, they're being told, be like a guy. If he's hot and you want to sleep with him, do it. It doesn't matter. Your past doesn't matter. You know, if a man really accepts you, you he'll accept you for who you are. We know this isn't always the case because we there's so many stories that I read that are women in their 30s and, and coming up on their 40s saying, no guy wants me anymore. And all the hot guys that I'm into don't want me and I'm only getting losers that want me. The truth is they're getting guys that are equal to them in looks and maybe value and or personality or whatever. And they're saying, well, no, I've that's me settling, sweetheart, not for you. And we know why that's a problem. So um, they say when you give quick bedroom fun, most studies say men get what they want and have less interest in sticking around. And plus, some authors say men despise easy women. It's not that, okay, so I know some of you guys despise easy women. I, I think, me personally, I think that's wrong. I, I If a woman wants to do her thing and she wants to go sleep around and have her fun, I don't despise her for it. I don't even blame her or knock her for it. It just means she's not the right one for me or for many of you. And because we know that it, they have a hard time pair bonding, they have they get bored when they're with just got one guy because they're used to the tingles and the ooh, new and exciting and interesting and fun. It's a different roller coaster ride every weekend. Well, all of a sudden you're going on the merry-go-round and that's all you get and people get bored. And this is happening again with men too, but it's, it's most prevalent with women because women are supposed to be the gatekeepers and they're supposed to say, no, you don't get any of this until you make promises. But now women are like, yeah, you're cute. Let's go. And, and that changed the rules of it. Uh, so they continue on. Um, letting him wait for the bedroom works magic both for you and on him. What waiting does for you? Protect your feelings. Um, yes, but no. Uh, a one night stand for many people involves zero feelings. So depends again on the situation. If it's just a, a hookup, which the hookup culture is in full swing, it is going at light speed right now. I think that's why a lot of people don't wait to have the fun is because it's like, you know what? Let's hook up. Let's have fun. I don't need to fall in love. I don't need serious feelings out of this. We'll just, yeah, let's just do this. And so I think uh, I would disagree actually with protecting the feelings part. I think um, that, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that it, it actually, the longer you wait and the closer you get with somebody, um, the worse it'll hurt. I mean, look at the guy that I read the other story about where his girlfriend's cheating on him, but making him wait. I bet he still cares for this girl. I, I think he's getting to know her better, probably forming a friendship and a bond with her. And then if he found out she was cheating on him, it's going to tear him up. But if it was like a casual hookup thing and she bounced on him, he'd be like, meh, whatever, I, no big deal. Uh, so anyway, they say what waiting does for you, protect your feelings. Men don't bond as much through the bedroom. Um, filters for serious men, the theory being that players won't wait. Um, they won't. Most of them won't. Keeps you in control. He's like the dog waiting for the treat. 
and that's another place that I have problems is because it is a control factor and it's used in marriages a lot of times. I know this, I went through it in my marriage. I've heard you guys mention it in your marriages where it's like, hey, you know what? Um, I, I said, yes, I said, I do. I'm providing a home or I'm providing my half of the, half of the relationship. This was kind of what you were gonna bring to the table for me and now you're not anymore. And you're, so that's kind of breaking your side of the bargain. And men are getting upset about that. And, and it, it creates a lot of resent. It creates men's eyes to wander and maybe think about leaving the relationship. Uh, what waiting does for him, he sees you as serious long-term material based on the Madonna garden hoe uh, dichotomy. Uh, the more he invests, the more likely he stays after the bedroom and ra rationalizes he must like you. What happens when you make him wait? The, ad the advice of letting him invests uh, the, the advice of letting him invest works well on paper. It is founded on solid cut psychology principles in some environment and situations. It might indeed be the best way to go. More on that later. Here's the science behind the advice of letting him wait to sleep with you. All right, number one, he likes you because you're scarce. Uh, it's true that people value what's scarce, especially when it's scarce because of high demand from others. Scarcity principle. Uh, there's a general rule that a few human beings escape. Okay, so first... It's scarce. Yes, if a woman is chaste, if a woman says, I have never been with a man, or I've had a few select partners, but they were meaningful to me, um, that means more to a guy than I've been with everybody, I don't even remember their names, and I was just having some fun. Now, let's face it, most women that are in the dating market today have a mix of both. Um, some women have a couple of casual flings in there. They may decide it's not for them. Uh, others may only do dedicated relationships. But when a guy, when a guy is with a woman, the one thing, the most valuable thing a woman can bring to a guy is herself. I mean, or at least kind of traditionally thinking, she's giving you the one thing that you don't have and can't access except through other women. You know, a guy cannot sleep with himself, uh, although we try as best we can. Um, so you're wanting one that's, hey, a newer model, one that's, that's not everybody has, has shared. And if it's not scarce, um, then it doesn't feel special. It just feels like, well, everybody can do this. Um, I'm doing this, so I guess, like, why would I commit to this if no one else has and she kind of gives it around? It, it also, the psychology behind that also is that it goes way back to, and I think this is lizard brain stuff in the back of your head, where this goes back, you know, maybe millions of years where we didn't have birth control. And if a woman was around with a lot of guys, the kid that she might be having is not yours. And we still kind of get that, you know, feeling a little bit today, especially when they put on Tinder that they have two kids already. You know she's been, you know, with other guys and those kids aren't yours. But the the rationale still, I think, sits uh, heavily with a lot of men saying, hey, you know what? She's had a lot of partners. It doesn't make me feel special. If she gives it away to everyone, then maybe I'm not that special to her. So I don't need to invest in her. Um, they continue on. He likes you because he invests. Several studies confirm that we like more people for whom we invest and not people who invest in us. The One of the consequences of the cognitive dissonance from Festinger in, in 1985, which postulate that people often back rationalize based on the actions. See also Ar Aronson, 1972. In simple words, he unconsciously thinks, I am investing in her and sticking around even with that, without getting the ultimate prize then it means I must really like her. Again, a little backwards thinking. So the the you're going to justify, why am I still here if I'm not having intimacy? And a lot of times, some, some men will think, well, maybe that means that I like her and I'm going to hang around enough and make that happen. They say, in that sense, the more he invests without payoff, the more he values you. Right. So if a guy keeps hanging in there and hanging in there, in his brain, he's thinking, I'm showing her I value her. I'm showing her I care about her. I'm showing I'm here for just not the bedroom action, that I actually am here for her as a person. The problem is, and again, we're not talking in all situations, but look at the story I just read where the girl's like, oh, I want him to value me. I'm still going to have my fun behind his back and sleep with other men because I want my bedroom fun, but he doesn't get any bedroom fun because I want him to value me. That's what's happening in a case like this. They say the more you, oh, and I just got back from the gym. Sorry, I got to drink a little liquid here. You look, the, the, okay, next point, point three, you look more good girl. And it's true that many, most uh, men think along the Madonna garden tool dichotomy. 
Uh, it even affects most men who say they are not affected by that line of thinking. So in that sense, not getting too wild too soon might help you stay away from the bad side of the dichotomy. However, there is a negative side of this equation. The negative side is the exact same as the positive one, that he will see you as the good, serious girl. Many a man may pay a professional because they have a mindset that they can do that with their wives, or they can't do that with their wives. Not good. Ideally, you want a man who sees you for what you really are, a woman with her own needs, her own uh, defects, sorry, her own defects, her own needs, and her own sexuality. Right, so if, uh, and th there's been other posts I've done about this as well, where a woman, a, a guy will date a woman and she says there's all these things she won't do, she's not that type of girl, and then come to find out they find an OnlyFans page or they find a video that was recorded or they found on her phone an old video, and she does do that stuff. She just didn't do that stuff with you. And it hurts guys' feelings because they say, you know something, she gave that away to other people, but not me, so she must think less of me. The truth is she's doing it so she, so you hold her in a higher esteem that she's not a bad girl and doesn't do these things. The problem is he, he may still end up seeing you as a bad girl. He just says, well, you're bad with everybody but me, so you must not care that much about me. And yes, men will go out and find professionals that will do things that maybe their significant others won't do or they'll only do on their birthday. We know that once a year gift if you're in a long-term relationship. Uh, they continue on. You keep bargaining power. Now, again, this is speaking to women. So when they're talking about you keeping bargaining power, they're talking about the women keeping bargaining power. We could argue that having power might not be the best approach to a relationship. But if we embrace that theory of bedroom as an arms race between men and women, then holding on to the, the card, the bedroom card, will give you more bar bargaining power indeed. I'm not a big fan of the power argument though, and I'm not on the ground of morality. But if your main power is the bedroom, then you lose all your power the moment you sleep with a guy. Trust me, you don't want to be the lady who's the o whose only allure is the bedroom. All right, so there are many reasons why letting him wait to sleep with you is good. Why do I urge you to consider to not uh, to not to let him wait instead? All right, let me pause and talk about bargaining power. This is one of the reasons I say do not marry women, period, end of statement. This is one of the reasons why I say you do not want to live with women, period, end of statement. Why? What happened? Now, they're talking about the first time you sleep together, and I get that. But what happens when she realizes, oh, the longer I make him wait, and I don't know why, but all married women, I think married women learn this from their mothers on their wedding night. Because pretty much once you get married, it's going to be, you know what, you upset me, you didn't do this. Um, if you do this, I'll do something special for you. And all of a sudden it becomes a way to control men. And I, I, I know this from relationships myself. And it's, it's used too often. I did a video on this where women were laughing about it. And even saying like, oh, I make sure he does chores for me. I make sure that he buys me certain gifts. I make sure he jumps through hoops to get his bedroom fun. And if he doesn't, well, that's the main reason. That's why men mostly want relationships from a woman to be with one woman that's safe, that they can uh, pair up with and, and feel close to and bond to, but also get the regular access to the bedroom. If you took the bedroom away from a relationship period, and then you asked men, how many men here would like to get married or be in a long-term relationship that is completely platonic and you don't get to sleep with each other? No man would raise his hand ever. They just wouldn't. So, you know, the bargaining power and the control over a guy withholding it is a danger in every relationship. And the minute you say, I do, or you're living with somebody, now you're trapped. And now she definitely has control over it. And especially so if you're married, because you can't go out and get some side piece, because if you do, you're in trouble. You may end up getting divorced and she takes half your crap. And so you're literally physically trapped. Okay, so he says, uh, why do I urge you to consider to not let him wait instead? Um, because the theory is based on average men and on specific situations. And if you want more than average, you must learn the exceptions. So what's the most important questions become? When does it work? Who does it work with? All right. So as you can see, this article really does focus on the woman's perspective. But I want you guys to see this from the man's perspective. He's obviously talking to women. But look at this from the man's perspective. Yes, we would like uh, to be in a long-term relationship with a woman that um, will pair bond with us, will partner with us, and will be with us. Does that mean that quick access to the bedroom means that she's easy? No. 
Not, not at all. In some cases, it actually means she really, really likes you and she finds you very, very attractive. That's not a negative. You have to find out, does she do the same thing with many of her past partners? And again, this may not be an easy conversation to have. It may, she may not be actually honest with you. These are all the, you know, these are all the danger cards that you, that get played when you're trying to form a new relationship. But the opposite here is that, again, he gives many reasons why women will withhold it and it's control, it's power, it's hoping that you see her as high value, um, even though she may not be a high value person, but it's not acting on, I'd say, her emotions. I would rather have a woman say, you know what, I just couldn't help it. I found you too attractive. I really did want to wait. This, this, I know they all say, oh, this is really not how I am. I've never done this before. They all say that. But, uh, but the truth of it is, once you get to know somebody, you can kind of gauge whether they're actually like legit or not. Um, you can find out about previous relationships and things like that. But again, in all cases, you never know if it's the truth or not. So you got to take the risk to get the reward, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, but I would rather have a woman be upfront and just be like, oop, that was too quick. Uh, I, but here we are versus falsely keeping it at bay. And she really does like me, but she's, I don't know, trying to give herself a higher value or like the other gal, she still wants it. And she ends up stepping out and getting it from just some uh, F boy in the meantime, making you wait. I mean, that, that obviously happens too. Okay, so uh, who does it work with? It works in some cultures. I make a long dissertation on the economics of the bedroom here, uh, how to date effectively, a scientific guide. I'll leave this story down below too. If you guys, there may be a lot of good branches of links off this. I haven't read them all. Uh, I'm gonna look at some of them. Maybe there's another video here. Uh, he says, but here's the short of it. When there are more men than women, the culture and the dating dynamics naturally shift towards a romantic courtship style of dating with men trying to win the women over the long haul, right? So when there are more, you've got, we'll say 100 men to 50 women, those women have a choice. They've got 100 men to choose from. They know there's only 50 of them. So every there's going to be 50 men that lose. So the women will work their hardest to catch the eye of a guy and a guy will win or a guy will work the hardest to win the heart of the woman that's the best that he can get but what happens when it fl it's flipped on its head he says when there are more women than men the culture devolves into more of a hookup culture in highly libertine cultures men and women are viewed as more similar and men aren't ready prepared and willing to do the long courtship thing. Even men looking for relationships tend to end up with women who help him along the dating process. The most successful women focus on moving forward together instead of getting as much as possible while leaving as little as possible. So let's say the role is reversed. There's 50 men and 100 women. They even say here it becomes a hookup culture. The culture devolves into a hookup culture. Why? because there are fewer men and all the women are trying to win his attention. And how do you win a man's attention? For long-term relationships, it's dating and it's the bedroom. For short-term relationships, it's the bedroom. And what a lot of women are doing today is using the bedroom, hoping that if she's nice to this guy and she, she gives in to his wishes, that he will eventually want to be with her. The problem is she can't fake the high value because the guy's already high value and he has choices of many other women. So now when we talk about dating today, today a lot of women are sleeping with the best 20% of men. Even if you were to split it down to the best 30% of, of men, that's 100% of the women all want the top 30% of men. Why do they only want the top 30% of men? Because they've been told, hey, participation trophy. Everybody's a winner and you're special. You're a snowflake. You deserve the best you can get. Don't settle for anything that you less than you deserve, hon. Girl power, you go get them. And so women now think, hey, I'm a catch. I'm a prize. So I'm going to go get the best guy I can get. And they flirt with these, these top 30% of men and guys are like, wow, look at all the women that are flirting and hitting on me and talking to me. This is easy. I don't have to commit to any of them. And so I'll have you Sunday, I'll have you Tuesday, I'll have you Thursday, I'll have you Friday. And those men are just plowing through women. And he even says it here, that the courtship goes out. Men are not going to take women on a date in this case. And now the top 30% of men are saying, I don't need to date you. I don't need to buy you coffee. 
I don't even have, even have to remember your name. Because if I'm bored with you, that girl over there is just as easy or easier. And so is that one and that one and that one. So I'm just going to keep sleeping around and having my fun. And the women cycle through them. And they, they keep going from one big, you know, great guy to the alpha guy to the next alpha guy, never to find happiness. And in the meantime, another 70, 60, 70% 70 of men are on the sidelines saying, man, I can't get a girl. They don't even look at me. I don't have a chance. They're all with the, the, the players, the F boys. I, I work hard. I'm a good guy. Maybe I'm not the tallest or the most handsome or the most this or that. I'm just not getting any action. The problem is the, that 70% of men are who these women start looking at when the women get beyond the F boy stage. So when the guys, the top 30% of guys aren't looking at them anymore, aren't paying them attention, aren't trying to take them home because they're going out with the younger models. They're going out with the cuter models. They're going out with the models with less mileage on them. And again, I, I use that as a general speaking term. Uh, then they start saying, I'm not getting any attention anymore, but I still want to get married. I still want kids, more and more kids. So what, who do I have to look for? So now they start viewing the other 70% of men. The problem is now those men have wisened up. And they say, you know what? I've been on the sidelines. I've been making money. I've been working hard. I've been happy by myself. I've been learning how to be single. Don't you come sniffing around all my hard work now that you're 35 or 40 and gave your young, fun, oh, I'm just crazy time. You know, you gave all those years to those other guys. Now you want to come to me to have a family and me to support kids? Why didn't I get all the fun years? Why didn't I get the good times? And those guys are saying, no, thank you. And now, they I forget the survey, and maybe I can find it for another video. Something like 45 and up, the, the number of women uh, that are 45 and up that are single are vastly more than men. Or single and looking. Let me correct that. Single and looking. The, the women in the dating market above 45, there are a lot more women than men. Why? Because the men, I mean, at a 45 dating market... And I'm, if I'm around 45, my market's not 45. I'm not looking for a, another 45, usually. I mean, they'd have to be pretty darn special. Why? Because I know she gave her fun away to the, the bad boys and did her thing. And now she wants to settle down. And maybe I don't want to settle down. And so what happens? Who are the girls that I can date that are like, nah, casual, fun. We'll just kind of take it easy. Those are the girls in their young 30s or you know mid 30s or 20s. And so a lot of men are saying, that's what I want now. I, I missed out on all these years of playtime because you ignored me. But now that I've got money and now that I'm successful and now that I'm doing better for myself and I got a good head on my shoulders, I want the fun. I want the good time. And so they're dating the younger girls that are given the good times. They're not ready for Settle Down Betty at 45, okay? All right, so continuing on. They say, uh, uh, read that paragraph. Okay, this means that when good quality women are abundant, Waiting games are likely to backfire. Now, he says good quality women, um, but I'm just saying women in general. And maybe this includes good women, but women in general end up, if you play a game, you get left on the sidelines. And that's what I was just talking about. You're not interested. You don't want to sleep with me. Next. How about you? Next. How about you? You will? Okay. It doesn't mean the guy's going to commit. It just means he's not going to date anybody. He says, you should know that in our current environment, especially in the West, good woman far outstrip good quality men. Also read Successful Women Dating. Now on the second biggest issue with longer waiting times, it works with average guys. All right, let me pause on that. I don't, you know, maybe he has some knowledge that I don't. Um, you could say that good quality women far outstrip good quality men. I'd like to know what that's based on. Now, women are making more money than ever. And as a matter of fact, some in many job markets, women are making more money than men, even though the wage gap and girl power advocates don't like to scream that. But women are doing very successful. And so for a woman to find a good quality man to her, she's got to find a guy that on average makes 52% more money, uh, more of an income than she does. I did a study on that. So, okay, but let's just go with his argument. There are many more far good quality women out there. If that was true then again, the top 20 or 30% of men are seeing all of them because the other 70% of men are having zero access to them. These men are invisible to these women. So I don't know if, if I believe him on that one, but anyway, let's move on. 
Uh, anyway, the waiting longer waiting times, it works with average guys. Letting him wait to sleep with you while chipping in a little during the courtship process can create a highly unbalanced relationship. He invests time, money, and effort while you receive and purposefully withhold the biggest fruit of love. Who do you think is going to stick around with that sucker's deal? Millionaires globetrotting the world? Entrepreneurs building companies? Driven men too busy to make their dreams a reality? Usually not. Higher quality man, men demand a balance in the relationship. Right. So if a woman's withholding all this and the guy keeps hanging in there and hanging in there and hanging in there, he's showing he's low value. He's putting her on a pedestal. And that goes back to the thumbnail of what happens when you put her on a thumbnail. You treat her like a queen. She will treat you like a peasant. Is that if you are saying, I will give you dates, I will give you flowers, I will give you love, I will give you my attention, I will give you time talking on the phone, and you know I want the bedroom fun, but I know you're not giving it to me yet, so I'm going to keep waiting around, and I'm going to keep hanging in there like a trooper until you give me a gift, or you give me a treat like a good puppy dog, that is a low value man. And if the reverse is true, or, or what he's talking about, I should say, is the balance has to be true. I'm taking you on a date. I'm, I'm investing time in you, but you're withholding what I want. I'm not going to invest any more time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste my time talking to you anymore. I'm not going to take you out, out to dinner anymore because it never goes anywhere. I don't get what I want. Yes, I like talking to you. Yes, I like spending time with you, but I'm, I'm also in this for the physicality. That's how men, and I've done videos on this as well, that's how men express their love, their companionship, their emotion, their feeling, their desire. It's important to men. And when that's being with, withheld, men are not getting what they need out of the relationship. So high quality men are going to say, you know what, you're holding out on me. I'm bored. I got other options. I got other things to do. He continues on. But worry not, middle of the pack men will be more than happy to provide and wait for some P. These are the guys most likely to be okay with the short changing tactics of letting him wait for as long as possible. Here's an example from crazy stupid love scene that always makes me smile. I'm not going to play it. Again, link will be below because YouTube and copyright and all that stuff. Some of the authors don't do understand, or excuse me, some of the authors do understand the principle, albeit they don't apply it. Kara King, one of the biggest proponent of delayed bedroom fun and high investment, writes the power of the kitty cat. I paraphrase, it's a clear sign you should break up with a guy when you invest a lot in him while he doesn't invest in you. I wonder why then she expects men to accept the same. Indeed, the same author a few, a few pages later says you should never lower your expectations. Why? Because she says a perfect 10 would never open the door for you or do all the nice things for you. Bingo. So if a perfect 10 would never invest too much, who would? Exactly. So a, a guy that's got his crap together, that can have lots of choices, if a woman waits and holds out, if he waits, what, he, what basically Kara Kings is putting in her own book, if he waits, well, that's the expectation. But if you're putting out and he's not reciprocating, in other words, taking care of you, ladies, then you shouldn't put up with that. Double standard, can't have it both ways. So if we wanted to even the playing field, a man should have to take a woman on a date or a couple of dates and invest time in her and uh, get to know her a little bit. Then she sleeps with him. And then as she continues to sleep with him, he continues to provide for her. That is a normal functioning relationship. What's happening today is either women are A, giving it all away without getting enough return from the guy, the F boys, the bad boys. They're not getting enough in return and so they, they go, oh, I'm not happy, but he's so hot and he's so good looking. He must be high value because he's not working for me. You see, he's playing hard to get. He's showing no interest in me. So he must be the higher value man. Now, what happens when she doesn't give it up, but the guy's taking her on dates and buying her flowers and spending time on her and she doesn't give it out? She says, wow, he's hanging around for me and he's not even getting what he really wants out of this relationship. I'm the one in control and power here. The problem is a lot of this is subliminal. I don't think a lot of people go out saying, if I do this, it's a power trip. And I'm going to be in the one in control of this relationship. Now, there may, there may be many people that do. But on a subconscious level, no one wants somebody that is far below their value or the way that they perceive their value, whatever that may be. All right, moving on. 
Uh, so again, this is where I got the graphic and I'm, I'm, I got this for the, I put it through Photoshop. Put your P on a pedestal, the power of the P. This is the, the book written by um, Kara King that is basically saying, ladies, don't accept anything but less and don't give out unless he gives to you. But if the reverse is true, then it's a, it's a, bad, it's a bad deal. I got to silence my phone. I apologize. I'm not very good at muting things. Okay. So she says, um, uh, continuing on here, the short, uh, he says, in short, the bad men will stick around and the best ones and the best ones will disappear. Now, what do we mean about bad men and best ones? The bad men, the bad men that are high value. Let me correct that. The bad men that are not high value. They may be high value in looks. They may be high value in physique. But they're kind of dirtbags. They're just play, and, and I don't mean legitimately dirtbags. I mean the women will feel like they're dirtbag bags when they get used. These guys will will just be players, and and those guys will they'll bounce. And and here the, he's using the saying that the best men will disappear. I'm going to disagree with that. I think he's got this part backwards. The bad men will stick around. Well, how about we say the low quality men will stick around. Low quality men who think they're getting a catch will stick around hoping to get the prize of her in the bedroom. But the high the 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 high value men, the men that legitimately are good looking, they have resources or wealth, they know they're a catch, they know they're rare, and it doesn't necessarily take a man uh to be incredibly good looking if he knows he's rare. A man who's incredibly wealthy um and successful, they don't necessarily rely on their looks or their money. They have power. They know the power of money. And so in many cases, that will make them high value, whether they spend that money on a woman or not. So I will say the low quality men will stick around. The high quality men will leave. He says the law of social exchange says that no relationship can stay out of balance for too long. Eventually, you have to reach an equilibrium. You see where I'm going. If the guy you're seeing has very little to offer compared to you, then he'll invest a lot and wait because he needs to make up for that imbalance. But of course, women want guys who are better and high quality men are least likely to accept those unbalanced relationships. With those guys, you should aim for more balance. Bruce Bryan of Never Chase Men Again is one of the few authors of women's dating books who gets to this point. He says, high quality men have little tolerance for egocentric women. Asking for the moon will not make you sound like a prize, but like an entitled princess on a pea from Never Chase Again. And entitlement is the type typical trait of low quality women. Bingo. So when I'm reading these dating apps and a woman says, I'm a princess, I'm special, you need to wait, you need to earn me, you need to deserve this. 99% of men say, F you. No, I don't. Oh, let me correct that. 99% of high quality men will say, no, I don't. F you, you got too much attitude and you're not worth it. And they will skip over. What those women will earn is the F boys going, whatever, I'll swipe on you and throw some game at you so I can see if I can smash. But so the higher value, you can't act like you're high value. Well, you can't demand that you're treated as a high value person. I can't walk in and say, hey, everybody, I am a high value man. Pay attention to me because I deserve it. You sound like a clown. As a matter of fact, a high value man would be like, just ignore me. I'm the quiet guy sitting in the back of the room. Don't even mind me. Go, go talk. You can find somebody better than me. And the minute that they start doing that, people will be like, I wonder why he's like, what's up with him? At least there's some curiosity there. The same thing goes for women. If a woman would say, you probably don't want me. I'm a good girl. I'm sweet. I'm kind. I'm nice. I'm not into the hookup culture. The bad guys will probably go away. They're not going to chase, especially if they don't think there's a hookup at the end of a couple different dates. But the good guys might be like, eh, okay, so maybe there's something there. Again, it's all a game. And this is the hard part is, is for so many people that are dating today. This is, you see this article that I'm reading. So many times I say, this is why men of, of good quality are not dating. Because you need to have, I wish I had a book here. You need to have a little crib note. Okay, if she does this, what does it mean? And how do I say, and what's the game, and how, and what's the, what is it, what, how can, the 50 ways a woman can lie, the 30 things you need to, so many men are like, you know what, 
all this just to have some bedroom fun. It's not worth it. I got better crap to do with my day. That's what's actually ironically happening to both very high quality men and to very or to lower quality men. I, I'm not calling any of you gentlemen low quality. But what I'm saying is that the men in the very top echelon are saying, look, this is so easy. I'm not going to jump through any hoops for any of you. Like, if you want this, you better give it up and you better, better make it easy. I have way too many choices. So they put in zero effort. Ironically, the lower value men, the men that may not have um, success in dating are saying, you know what? Everything I do, it doesn't work. It's just a waste of energy. So I'm going to put in zero effort. So what happens? Now, a lot of women are going to find that not very many men will put effort into dating anymore. And until things change, they're just not going to. All right, so he continues on. Uh, and entitlement is typical trait of low quality women. Smart men know how to treat you based on who you are and how much they like you, says Brian. And he adds that men with a backbone or are annoyed when you need to remind them. And Brian is right. In, and indeed, those men with a backbone will flee very soon if you demand without giving. And withholding the bedroom as a bargaining chip is part and parcel of that mentality of to get without giving. I think this goes in many ways, too. Look, a guy may really like a woman, and he may really like sleeping with her. But if she's argumentative, if she's uh, making him jump through hoops, there's going to be that balance where he, sa he says, you know what, this crap isn't worth it. I'm moving on. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to deal with you anymore. You could be the best woman in bed. You could be the best cook. You could be the, the most attentive lover and be a wonderful woman for this guy. But if you're a headache for him, the minute that headache becomes more than what you're bringing to the table, the man is out. So these women that are starting off like, oh, I'm I'm argumentative or I, I have an opinion or you have better like you better like a strong woman. Guys like that's a headache and I haven't even started yet. I am out of here. <laughs> the w women would get a lot further if they're like, you know what? I'm just kind of your average girl. I'm nice. Here's my hobbies. This is what I'm into. If you're into this, let's talk. A guy would at least say, you know something, I'm willing to give this a shot. Of course, the woman wouldn't look at most of the men talking to her because she's still got her eyes on the prize. But there are exceptions out there. There are women out there that are, are not like this. The thing is, how many of them are there? How easy it, is it to find them? It's not easy. And if you, didn't, if you didn't see my video I just posted up yesterday, I just talked about Aaron Clary's book. And um, I, I forget the title. They um the return of investment on women uh, or the return on investment of women. I wish I had the thumbnail pulled up. It shows you me how shows you how um, short term memory I am. I don't even remember a book review I did yesterday. It is a great uh, a book. I just don't remember the beginning title of it. But anyway, Aaron Clary wrote this whole book, uh, 100 some odd pages about how if you here's the statistics of you meeting a sane woman and a woman that doesn't have issues, and she's not a girl power advocate, and blue hair, and crazy, and angry, and hates men, and sane, and not on medication, and she's, and she'll swipe on you, and by the time he's done, you've got like a 0.02% chance of actually having a relationship succeed. When you hear statistics like that, guys are like, I'm not, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to get you. You need to meet me on at least even ground, at least even ground, and until women do that, it's not going to happen. And I, that's why I say that's what's got the dating everything so screwed up. Okay, top guys despise the waiting game. One other issue with the waiting game is exactly just that, the game part of the equation. Some games are good and helpful, but the waiting game is not a good type of game because it seeks control. And the best guys are not cool with being controlled. And this is, again, going back to what I just talked about. I'm not going to mention it all again. But again, guys are just like, you know what? I don't need this crap. Like, you are not a high enough value for me to worry about. I'm not going to worry about jumping through the hoops or trying to win you over or come up with funny text games to keep your attention. F it. I got other things I'm going to do. Smart men know there is no link between waiting time and piety. Experienced or more socially aware guys know better. They know the relationship between slow to the bedroom and Madonna has more holes than an Italian mama colander. They know that some of the quickest bedroom fun happens with inexperienced women and women without second motives, women who don't play games. And when they see a girl who's otherwise been around putting the brakes on them, they'll think... She's sampled around. She's probably had a few lusty encounters and now she wants to put me under the yoke and pretend that she's a good gal. Right, so let me pause here for a second. 
This is kind of what I talked about in the beginning of the video. I have been in relationships where we moved very quickly to the bedroom. And it was, then it might have been after texting and phone calls and getting to know each other. So we weren't complete strangers, but we moved to the bedroom. And you know what? It was natural. It was fun. But it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that that girl is easy or she does this with a lot of men. In some cases, it may mean she really, really is into you, really likes you, and really finds you attractive. That's not a low value indicator. In some cases, that's actually a woman saying, you know what, I find you a such a great catch that I'm really into you. Now, can it also be that a girl's just like, nah, I sleep with everybody? It can. This is something that you kind of have to learn through dating and more years of experience. It's hard to tell otherwise. But when a guy, when a guy, when a woman seems like she's kind of into you, but she keeps putting on the brakes, but you know she's not like pristine, she's been with other guys, it can make you feel like, why are you playing games with me? Like, what is going on here? Why am I all of a sudden under like the pressure control valve here? Like, why are you trying to control the relationship? And I feel like you're manipulating me. That is a huge red flag and that'll send a lot of guys packing. He continues on. And while some might be okay with that, some others will resent you and they'll plot to wait and then bounce. Uh, some other guys might see through it, but for whatever reason, still accept it. Others, the relationship won't be built on the solid foundations of full sincerity. I do know a guy, he was a friend of mine up in the, and we were in the military together. I know he had a girlfriend and he really did like her and she decided to make him wait. I don't know if she, I don't know her past. I don't know if it was a game with her or if she really wasn't comfortable. But this guy was also a bit of a player. He did really like her. He did want her as a girlfriend she was pretty she was pretty attractive in multiple ways too but he still wanted to play he also went out and got other girls behind her back and then still tried to date her and eventually they she finally gave in they started sleeping together and they started dating then he gave up on playing with the other women for a while and then he got bored of her and then started to play around as well i'm not saying that guys don't do this stuff too guys can do this stuff too I have an example here of a woman that's done it. I read you that story. I have friends that are the opposite, that were guys that wanted a good girlfriend, but also stepped out behind their backs. It's, it's not, this is not a perfect blanket statement, but it is an indicator that if she makes you wait and, and you don't feel that she did that in other relationships, if you keep dating, if you keep putting out, if you keep working for it, you're putting her up on that pedestal because she's saying, I'm getting all the gifts and the attention and the dates and everything I want, and I don't really have to give him what he wants. And that's a control game. And when you put her up on that pedestal, you never ultimately will win that game. She will see you as weak. It would be better for you to just say, you know what, I'm. this isn't working for me, and just walk away. And if she's legitimate and she does want to wait, you weren't the right guy for her, right? And if she was playing a game for you uh, on you, well, she's not right for you. Uh, anyway, late bedroom means no chemistry. And finally, we get to talk about the, the bedroom fun. What does waiting for the bedroom say about the bedroom? Matthew Hussey, Husey, Matthew Husey in Get the Guy writes that the bedroom should happen after an emotional connection has taken place, albeit, he adds, that's likely to happen on a first date. Even then, he says something even smarter, which I paraphrase. Waiting too long is a mistake because he will feel like he's not important to you sexually. And men do get their validation through the bedroom. And that much is true. Right. So if 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 you if she makes you wait and wait and wait, you're gonna feel like she's not hot for you. And that, you know what, you may think she's a cold fish, that she's really not excited to be with you. And a lot of times that will make men disinterested. And women will say, Oh, well, he just didn't want to wait. He must have been a player. He didn't wait around to sleep with you, so he must be he must have been a player. The truth is, it can actually hurt a guy's feelings quite deeply when a guy does like a woman and he is very attracted to her and she keeps saying, no, let's wait. No, I'm really not interested. We're not there yet. To the guy, he feels like, you know what? She's not into me as much as I'm into her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get crushed here. I'm just going to move along. It's obvious she's not into me. And that can happen as well. Uh, they say, uh, he says, the longer you wait, the more you communicate that you're not so attracted to him. When you wait too long for the bedroom, your relationship resembles more of a friendship. And that's not really a dream start, is it? Then one day he sees a woman looking at him with lusty eyes and he'll wonder, hmm, 
Maybe it's just my partner who's a little bit of a frigid girl. And he moves on. It doesn't work in difficult markets. I define difficult markets as environments with an abundance of great women and not many great guys. Now, I think he said earlier, this is the environment we're in right now. Um, we'll read into this a little bit. I'm not sure if I agree with him on that. John Berger in Date and datanomics makes a good case that most women with a degree in the West are in difficult markets simply because there aren't that many well-educated men. I'll stop him there. They are right. Women are graduating college um, in upper, uh, which is, I think it's uh, bachelor, master's, and doctorates. They're graduating more than men at a 20% higher rate. And we know women do not want to date or marry down. So 20% more women finishing college than men, that means that those men are, quote, not very great guys. Now, we know they don't literally mean they're not great guys, but this is how those women view those men, as they're not a great guy because I'm higher educated as a woman, I'm smarter, I'm better, I'm the, I make more money, I'm the, so he's less. So those men are invisible to that woman. I think that's what he was talking about when there's not a lot of great guys in the market. At least that's that's what he's referencing here. When good female prospects outnumber men, men tend to become more promiscuous and to expect early bedroom fun as part of the deal. Most, women's, most women might recoil in, disgu in disgust here, and I get you, I would react the same way. However, that doesn't make it any less true. And as Ray Dalio says, we can all only gain from looking at reality as it is. And the reality is that there is, if there are more equally great women available, it's fair to expect some of them will sleep with him sooner and some will sleep with him later. And who do you think he's more likely to end up in a relationship with? Is it the woman he's sleeping with? Of course. When uh, the bedroom fun means a relationship. For most high quality modern women, this uh, this it, uh, he, didn't, he didn't write that out. Uh, maybe he sent, meant this is. For most high quality mod modern women, this is it. Chances are higher that the woman who might moves the slow. Uh, now, nah, let me try that again. Chances are higher that the woman who moves the slowest will be passed up for the woman with whom he's actually currently sleeping with. Game theory proves that the more forward women are the ones who get the guy. And so does simple rationality. It's a simple law of momentum and the pass path of least resistance. He can meet one woman and then he needs to court her, bring her flowers, and then, well, then nothing. He goes home to take care of himself because, you know, crank one out himself. Or he can meet another woman, enjoy the bedroom, cook a meal together, watch a movie in bed, and be his real self because men are always more natural and relaxed when the bedroom fun has already happened. Which do you think he is more likely to end up in a relationship with? Now, this science actually sounds right. But there's one important problem with this in today's dating world. If a man has two twins, we'll say two women, exactly the same job, exactly the same looks, exactly the same personality, everything is exactly the same. One goes on a few dates with him. They get a, a mutual attraction to each other and she starts sleeping with him. Or one goes on a few dates with him, decides, hey, we should wait. Let's take this slow. Let's wait. Let's, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And he starts feeling like maybe she doesn't, maybe she's not into me. He will go with a girl that is sleeping with him and into him every time because that means he gets more bedroom fun. It means he doesn't have to try as hard to win her attention or her love. The problem is this, because of the market we're in now, there are tons of women. There are so many women shooting for that smallest group of men that those men don't have to try at all. And those women have to try really hard to get their attention. And what's the easiest way to get that man's attention? and to try to get him to solidify himself to that girl by sleeping with him. The problem is these men know this. And so the women are doing this. They're going on a date, maybe a couple dates. Maybe they're going straight to the hookup. They're sleeping with him. And then they say, I want, let's cook a meal together. Let's watch a movie in bed. Go ahead and stay over and stay with me. And the guy, just like I talked about in this screenshot, with uh, this girl, I've never dated anyone that was proud to date me. And they are always like, no, I don't want to tell anybody. Right. That's what's happening in this case. Is the guy saying, I'm really not that into you. You are not that great a catch. I am sleeping with you. And that's how you've gotten me to stay around for this long. But I'm really not into you. So, sorry. And he moves on. 
So now women are desperately throwing themselves at men and sleeping with them, hoping to, to outrace all the other girls and to catch the, that great guy. The problem is it's not working because that great guy knows it. And he knows that, well, she's going to throw herself at me and he is and he is, or uh, she is and she is and she is and she is. They're all going to throw themselves at me. I, I, I win no matter what. So I never have to do anything. And they all turn into F boys at a certain point. Not all of them, but a good portion of them. And the rest of the 60% or 70% of men, they don't have experience in dating. They don't know how to play the games. They don't want to play the games. They may not feel that they're physically attractive enough. They may be younger and not have an income. They don't even get to play the game. And, they're, and these women will not, will not give these guys anything. Think about this. Those men, and, and I know some of you are into this stuff. I don't know why. Those men are the only fans where the woman is getting everything that she wants out of you. Money and attention and validation. So she opens an OnlyFans page. And what's she getting from the guy? Money. Does she want bedroom fun from the guy? No. Does she want legitimately want his attention? No. She wants your validation and your money. So now the bottom 60% of men are relegated to either being single, um, maybe, you know, maybe going on a couple dates here and there, um, but usually it's not going to be with a woman of their caliber. Or... They they watch this you know spicy movies online and and call it a night you know a three stroke joke, call it a night and go to bed. Uh, they're out of the dating scene or they become an OnlyFans you know or a guy that goes and hires a professional, and because those women they don't see value in those men, and wrongfully so. I know a lot of you guys may not have the experience or you you may not have the the best of luck, but that doesn't mean you're a low value man. It means they see you as low value because they're the women's uh, the women's um shopping mentality they're they're what they think they can get and win and date is all screwed up and i want you guys to 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 know this that when i'm talking about the bottom 70 percent of men i'm not talking that you're legitimately bottom men i don't want you to ever think that i'm just saying that in the luck of dating and what you're bringing to the modern dating pool is not currently desired you might be a hardworking, good, intelligent, desirable man to a normal, intelligent woman. However, normal, intelligent women are not doing that right now. They're going out and chasing all the bad boys and sleeping with them, trying to see if they can secure the relationship with them. So when I'm talking about you guys out there, I am not putting you down. I'm not saying you're lesser than anybody else. I'm not saying that you don't deserve it. I'm just saying that what what you might be bringing to a relationship is, is just frankly what a lot of women are not looking for. If I pull up in an old vehicle and I tell people I live in a bus, that pretty much ends most of my, my dating chances, even though they know nothing else about me. All right, so moving on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where did I leave off here? Uh, what's the alternative? Okay, now a note. Don't get this article wrong. It's not to say you should rush. Wait as long as you are comfortable with which for a lot of women is 17 minutes over Tinder. Um, but if you're convinced that you want to delay the bedroom, then I would strongly recommend you decouple the bedroom fun as a bargaining chip to ask for his investment. Do it like this. Keep the relationship balanced. Uh, show you really like him and t tell him you want to take it slow. Show the light at the end of the tunnel. Say you're not ready, but will be soon. Make the bedroom fun pleasurable, guilt-free experience. Uh, best of both worlds, early bedroom fun is and, and serious girl. So you can sleep with him, but also make sure that he has to uh, value that for him. And then he gives a summary. Now, let me read his summary just to give it a sums up. Uh, most, basically all the dating books for women tell you two things. Let him wait for the bedroom fun as much as possible and make him invest as much, much as possible. That's how you get a guy to stick around, uh, provide and pamper is the message. In this article, I showed you that the principle does not work in the environments with lots of good female prospects. And when you get, uh, when you hook some guy in with the let him wait game, it might not be the boyfriend you really want. So um, and I did pull up this other article. Uh, this is from the post and I talked about this another video women are struggling to find men who make as much money as they do right these men are not good men or not good enough men because they value a man based on his looks his income his musculature um, how much money he's bringing to the table those are all primary and if those are not in the the upper echelon forget it you're out um i'll leave it there i um I'm, i got some dating profiles of the day don't go yet um i got some dating profiles of the day but as far as our main article here's the thing if you wait around if you're not getting what you want out of any relationship whether you're married whether you're dating whether you're long term whether you're short term if you're putting more cookies into the jar than she is 
and she's the one taking out all the cookies. So you're, you're the only one putting cookies into the jar and she's taking all the cookies out. You're in an unbalanced relationship and it's not going to last long or you're going to be miserable. There's got to be some some equity here. And the same thing I've said it before, and I'll say it again, to you girls that listen to this and are going out and throwing your bodies at these top 20, 30% of men, sleeping with them because they're hot or they're funny or they you know drive a fancy car or whatever, you'll get to sleep with them for a little while till they decide they find somebody new or get bored of you. They're never going to like you. They're never going to date you. They're never going to stay with you. They're never going to value you. You're just a... You're just a you're just a play toy for them. And as soon as you start lowering your expectations, ladies, to something that is on par with you and something that is more reasonable, you'll find guys that actually appreciate you, that actually want to date you, that will actually take you out and treat you well. Probably not many on this channel, but, you know, in general. All right, guys, now it is time for the dating profile of the day. All right, first one. I don't have a photo on this one, but I don't think it matters. Um, I don't think I do. Let me scroll up. Nope. She's 36. She's a fun-time mommy. Not full-time, fun-time mommy. She is bi. Uh, She likes Disney, tattoos, foodie, vegan, wine. Okay. Yummy mommy to two gorgeous girls and a Jack Russell. We come as a package deal. You must love dogs and children. Wine, Disney, yoga, and veganism is my passion. I think I would need a lot of wine to do a Disney movie. Uh, I'm just saying. She says, I'm 5'8", so you have to be at least six feet tall to qualify. (laughs) Ladies, I, I weigh 155 pounds, so for you to qualify to date me, you must be 125 pounds with C cups. What is the relation here? Why do you need... How about I'm 5'8", so to qualify, be 5'8". And when I wear heels, I'll be a little bit taller than you. But apparently she likes to wear, I don't know, four-inch heels. So you got to be taller than her in her heels, I guess, guys. Uh, So here's another six-footer. Surprise. Shocking. Uh, I like them tall for a reason. Big feet, big hands. I guess that's supposed to mean like big trouser snake. Um... Here's the thing, those those do not correlate at all. Um, I can tell you this as a short man. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But I, I know that for a fact, I've actually read studies on this. This does not have anything to do, one doesn't have anything to do with another. But again, she's basically saying, I, I like them tall for a reason because I want you to have something large in your pants. Again, guys, can you imagine putting on a dating profile? Um, I like petite with big boobs because reasons. Th- women would be like, hey, that's very shallow and callous of you to have requirements like that what about the bbw the big beautiful women well here it's okay for her to shame anybody that's not apparently tall and or long she says i'm bi but sway towards men i don't have a job and don't plan on getting one anytime soon so you must be able to provide (laughs) where's my cash register button i'm gonna have to just load that on default there you go guys so she's uh, uh two two kids a dog Uh, You have to be six feet tall. I don't work, and you better provide, and you must be inked, she says, and don't be afraid to say hi. Remember, this whole day I've been talking about, guys, when you're putting more cookies into the cookie jar and she's the one taking them, she is putting no cookies in. But you must be tall, must be attractive, must be inked, must be able to provide, and you must be packed in the pants. And what's she bring to the table? Two kids and a dog. And veganism. And Disney. Ooh, that sounds fun. All right, next dating profile. She's 28. Um, I blurred her photo. She is showing a lot of clivage. A very low-cut top that I don't see the bottom of the top. I just see a whole lot of mushed cleavage. Um, She's 28. And she's verified, so she must be very serious about this. She says, y'all F-boys are about to turn me into an F-girl. All right, if you've been messing with F-boys a lot, ma'am, you are an F-girl. I just put it to you like that. I just call you out. If you've been with F-boys, you are an F-girl. Welcome to the party. If my soon-to-be husband doesn't bring me a beer in the shower while I'm washing up his dessert, well, then I don't want it. 
All right, so you have to bring her beers in the shower. Alcoholism and demanding. And you got to serve her. Oh, good times. I can't wait to get this girl's number. I have two beautiful children. Oh, shocking. And if you don't like that then and don't want to be called daddy, move the F along. Peace. Okay. I know a lot of guys that are okay with being called daddy in the bedroom. Uh, I myself personally have no problems with it. However, I don't want to be called daddy because I'm a daddy to your kid, two kids. I'm just saying. Maybe that's a preference thing. Um, do you remember what we were talking about here? Again, in the article, what I was talking about, where women are demanding like they're high quality. That's what she's doing. She is trying to act like uh, I'm high quality. And if you don't like it, F off. And you better bring me beer or F off. And her last paragraph, if you drink White Claws, whatever that is, best believe I'll make you hold my purse like the bee that you are. Get a real drink. Oh, so she's tougher than you or more manly than you because she drinks a different alcohol than you. Oh, you're high quality. You scream. You and your 12 inches of cleavage scream high quality, ma'am. Yes. No, you basically come across as very, very low value, especially with the all F boys are about to turn me into an F girl. That instantly tells me what type of person you are. Because if there were a bunch of F boys and you're like, you know what? Everybody here is an F-boy. I'm looking for a serious guy that's not into the hookup culture, and then we can talk. But the fact that you keep screwing around so much with F-boys that you're kind of turning into an F-girl, you're telling me you are an F-girl. Just saying. Too late. So there you are, guys. Um, lots to choose from. Another two dating profiles gets a swipe, and they're out there waiting for you. Uh, guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below, as always, if you have. Thank you very much. And the best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. Join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. 15,000 members over on our forums. It is fun. We have memes. We have jokes. We have recipes. We have manosphere stuff. Um, and if you're a supporter, you get to watch podcast or you get to listen to my podcast and special one-off ep episodes. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. Remember, make sure she's putting in as much, at least as much into the relationship as you are, or you're putting on her on a pedestal. And make sure that uh, you're you're going to get what you want out of the relationship. Because if you're not, you're just being a sucker. <laughs>